So, Erlind, you can start, please. Okay. Let's give me, let me use some very uh, resumed words. So, good afternoon, Professor Compez Lopez and Professor Sol Noki. I hope I said it right. Good afternoon to everyone present, which is not a lot of people for the moment. On behalf of Universidad Lusofna, I want to welcome you and thank you for your presence in the sharing of knowledge. I also want to congratulate you for the publication of your book entitled Sustainable and Innovative Wine Tourism Success Models from Around the World. This is uh, indeed um, a very hot topic in terms of academic research and very current, especially for wine producing countries who have finally begun to realize the advantage and potential of this type of uh, tourist activities. Advantages in a macro perspective for the development of regions that normally have less tourist resources as they are integrated in rural area areas and in a micro perspective for each of the players in tourism process producers traders hotel restaurants and so on so without further delay um, let's move on to the presentations <laughs> okay we we are uh, having some calls i don't know if people are trying to to get into the to our session but uh, they are i don't know what's happening but uh, we are going to start and then I hope they can uh, get to the session, okay? So, hello everyone. It's a great pleasure that we are here today to present the book Sustainable and Innovative Wine Tourism Success Models from Around the World. We have uh, as our guests, the co-authors and coordinators of the book, Raul Compej Lopez and Gargay Soenoki. Uh, who will give us a global view of the reality of wine tourism worldwide. In this book, published by the Kashamar Bank, 36 actors, authors from 15 different countries participated uh, and contributed with their chapters to the success of this book, which is already in the running for the best OIV book contest. Before I go away, uh, I will also make a short presentation of the coordinators. Um, Raul Compes Lopez holds a PhD uh, in agriculture, uh, agriculture engineering from the Polytechnic University of Valencia and works as a professor uh, at uh, the UPV Department of Economics and Social, uh, Social Sciences. He is the Vice President of the European Association of Wine Economists, uh, Academic Coordinator of the Wine Technology Platforms Economics Area, and an expert member of the Spanish Commission of International Organization of Wine and Wine. He has coordinated uh, two collective books awarded by uh, the OIV, uh, one about economics of wine in Spain and in the world, and the other one about the wine sector facing the challenge of climate change, public and private uh, mitigation and adaptation strategy in the Mediterranean. He is also a director of the study about the cost of grape production for winemaking in Spain for the Wine Interprofessional Organization of Spain. Okay, now is about uh, Gergay uh, Soenoki. Uh, he was born and grew up in Hungary. After studying agriculture economics, he went to Geisenheim University in Germany as a doctoral student, where he investigated the influence of wine packaging uh, on taste perception and willingness to buy. After his P PIG, uh, he remained at Geisenheim University and specialized in consumer behavior. Community, uh, com communication and social media, organic wines, market analysis, and wine tourism. Today, Gargay works as a professor of markets research and is author of several books and book chapters, more than 20 reviewed scientific papers and 90 industry articles published in English, German, and Hungarian. Furthermore, he is an expert delegated by the German Federal Ministry of Food and Agriculture to the International Organization of Wine and Wine and the fields of wine economic and statistics. Well, I'm not going to speak anymore. And so I give the words to our first guest, Raul Campes. 
thank you for being here, you too. And Raul, please, I give you the words. Thank you very much, um, Maria Joao. Thank you to the representants of the University, La, La Uspona, uh, Aslindo, Mafalda, Jose Aurelio, and Carla. I am very happy to, to be here. This is our first presentation, first international presentation of the book. The book has been released very recently, and the first presentation was the, the last, the former week in, in Jerez. Okay, so this is uh, completely fresh, and we are very happy. We are, we are very excited to, to present, to share with you our, 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 um, our child, okay, our kid. Okay, so I am going to, to, to present you. We have uh, agreed, uh, uh, Gergely and me, uh, the presentation. Okay, so in, in the first part, I am going to, to explain you uh, more about the structure, about the philosophy, about the, the main contents, if you want, uh, without um, entering at the end of, uh, of the topics. Unless, unless some questions that I would like to, to underline, okay? And in a second part, uh, my, my colleague and, and friend uh, Gerd Lee uh, is going to, to enter in, in, in more detail to focus in, in, in some specific points that are very important for us and uh, show a little bit uh, the kind of contents that you can find in the, in the book. Okay, so I am going to, to start well at the moment, uh, just one, one remark. Uh, at the moment, I am not at the university. From the beginning of the year, I am the, the director of an international organization called CM, uh, International Center for a High uh, Mediterranean Agronomic Studies. It is an international organization uh, of, um, of uh, 13 countries and Portugal and Spain uh, belong to this organization, okay? We, 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 we work in, in agricultural cooperation, agri-food cooperation, mainly in the Mediterranean area. So at that moment, I, 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 don't, I am not professor at the university, okay? At least during four years, I am going to stay here in, in Zaragoza as director of this uh, international organization in, in Spain. Okay, so... Up, let me up. Okay, so the first question is the origin and the, and the evolution of the of the idea of the book. Okay, at the start, uh, at the as, at the start of the book is the um, the, 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 the the request of Cajamar. Cajamar is uh, as uh, Maria Joao um, explained. Uh, Cajamar is, um, is a Spanish bank. Uh, it's a, a rural bank is specialized in the rural sector at the, at the beginning. In fact, it's a credit cooperative, so we specialize in the agri-food sector that uh, promotes, uh, let's say, research and, and book publications and oriented towards um, knowledge transfer in the agri-food sector. I have had to publish my two former books that Maria Joao mentioned with the Cajamar, so we have a long let's say a long uh, history of uh, collaboration, okay? So in three years ago, uh, one of the directors of Cajamar asked me one question, <laughs> what can we do as, 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 as bank, as, uh, as people concerned for the agri-food economy uh, in general and in particular for the wine economy to promote wine tourism in Spain. So at that moment, the idea was Spain, as you know, is a, is a great um, tourist uh, potent um, uh, country, okay? So we are very, 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 very big uh, figures in terms of visitants, more than 83 people before the crisis, and we are one of the main, okay, tourist destinations of, of the world. But when we look at uh, the figures in the wine tourism, we are relatively low, uh, okay? If we compare with our potential on or if we compare with other uh, wine tourist countries. So, so the, the question that uh, he asked me is, how can we do, how can we do, okay, to, to promote, to, 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 to help uh, the development of wine tourism in Spain? So <laughs> my, my answer was, let's, let's, uh, let's do a book, uh, let's do yeah, research, but uh, collecting information to, 
to, to ask in experts in, in Europe, in the world, to, to, to get ideas, ideas that maybe we can uh, apply to, to Spain, okay? So um, they accept my proposal. Uh, in fact, we had um, a successful history of books, as you, as you know. Uh, so the idea of, uh, of um, doing a new collective book, uh, and the beginning directed by or edited by me with experts around um, the main the main uh, wine tourist countries okay asking for the the keys asking for the more important elements to to to, to learn about about them uh, it, it was uh, well received by by okay. Kahama, okay? so i i, I prefer a first Excuse me, I, I, I am hearing some voice by then. So, Boa tarde. Okay, well, well, I continue. So, I prepare a first, a first program, a first um, index of content. Okay, I, I contact with some colleagues, uh, some Spanish or not Spanish colleagues, and, and I also contact with uh, Gergely because I, I knew Gergely from the uh, the OEV um, meetings, and uh, Gergely is one of the most important experts in the world of um, wine marketing, wine tourism. And at the beginning, I wanted to that uh, Gergely participated in the book as a, as an author, okay, of the of the German of the German uh, chapter because Germany is one of the big uh, countries that we have incorporated in our book. But uh, Gergely explained me to me with a very good uh, criterion that um, he, he could uh, add much more than only a German chapter uh, because he had uh, a global view and not only um, contacts in, in, in the most important countries of the world in, in, in wine tourism, but, but he had also um, worked in, in the field of wine tourism even more than me. And uh, he had uh, also good ideas to incorporate to the book. So we we, we agreed to co-edit uh, with, with together with two both the book. Okay, so uh, Gergely uh, uh, started to, to participate not only as an author, but uh, as as editor, helping okay. the helping us to to expand uh, to expand the, the book uh, to 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 get. Um, more experts and to incorporate uh, more ad ideas about um, about other or other models challenges and and so on so uh, a third element important in the in the path of the evolution of the book was a seminar that we organized in in march in in valencia just before the, the pandemic um, official uh, start uh, uh, unfortunately, it was in Spanish, and Gergely couldn't participate. And uh, we, we, that we do what we did in in Valencia in last year was to to prepare a seminar mainly with the Spanish authors, uh, just to discuss some of the uh, contents of the book that they have uh, already started to to prepare. It was a, a first opportunity to present uh, to present information, to discuss, and to and to share and to share the the view of all us and um, and the the last year in august uh, the, the, of the last year uh, once the pandemic uh, of the covid-19 was um, changing completely the um, let, let's say the the landscape of the wine tourism I, I wanted to visit some specific, some iconic um, wine tourist projects in Spain, just to see in, in person, not only to know on the, on the project, uh, taking into account the sustainability and innovation uh, elements that, uh, that we wanted to know because they, they are the focus of our book, but just to see how they, they were adapting to the, to the crisis. At that moment, I, I have to, to share with you that, that we, uh, Gergely and me, and the publisher also, we, we, we were a little uh, confused, in, confused in, the, in the sense that we, we had started the book in, in a, let's say, honey moment with, uh, 
all the perspective of, of, of growth of the tourism in general and the wine tourism in particular very favorable and we we started to to, to see that uh, when the book was released uh, maybe the, the panorama the situation was uh, completely different okay in a very very bad situation and with a very black and very black um, scenario for the future so what to do what to do Gergely and me we decide to continue and we invite uh, to the authors to to try to incorporate even if they uh, they were finishing um, the chapters to try to incorporate some ideas about uh, how the COVID-19 crisis was affecting, uh, how the, the COVID-19 crisis could affect in the future, how the model of wine tourism could adapt uh, to uh, the, the, the post-COVID-19 scenario, okay? So in some cases, in some chapters, we can find some ideas, some thoughts of the authors about, uh, about this, this concert and in other cases not. Okay, so we, we have not really um, incorporated the COVID-19 as a, um, a, a hot topic because we, we had the time to do it and because at the beginning we, we had incorporated this, uh, this scenario. Okay, so at least during my visit of August 2020, uh, mainly in the, in the northern part of Spain, where in, in August the, the crisis, the sanitary crisis was less serious than in other parts, so I could move relatively free, and I could see this, uh, this uh, successful cases and also how different, different um, sellers in different parts of Spain were suffering and were uh, adapting to, to this, this situation, and this was very, very interesting for, for me. Okay, so the, the book uh, with this introduction of the origin, the evolution, um, and the main uh, steps of the process, it's a very ambitious work. Uh, Maria Joao have already mentioned that uh, the book has uh, 25 chapters and, uh, uh, part and has the participation of a 36 author. We are among, among the authors, I would say, the, some of the leading international experts, okay? Uh, the publisher has done a double edition, uh, a complete edition in English and a complete edition in Spanish, okay? Translating the, the chapters of, from Spanish to English and from the English to Spanish, depending on the original. So the, the, the publisher is the first time that Cajamar um, do something like that. So they are expecting, they have the idea that this book can be a, a very important book. Uh, um, the, multi, the approach is multidisciplinary in the sense that uh, uh, among these 36 authors, you can find experts in marketing, in tourism, economic, in business, sociology, anthropology, engineering, law, wine and wine. Okay, thanks for talking. Excuse me, there is a voice like that. Oh, so multidisciplinary approach. Well, as I explained you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. This is, a, this is um, a work of three years, taking into account the origin and the, the final release uh, at, at, at the beginning of this year. Um, the methodological approach is the um, transfer and application of knowledge, mainly academic. Uh, so the idea is to, to, to give, uh, to take uh, the information that has been published mainly published when there is um, when there is a reference academic reference for that okay in some cases um, some of the authors they are not academics or um, it doesn't exist um, papers or, or books so it is not possible okay to to, to make references to to academic uh, uh, academic references. So in this case, okay, the, the author explains and uh, taking into account other other sources. Okay, but the the, the idea is it's let's let's uh, take uh, the the scientific knowledge about wine tourism and let's put this information 
in a way that can be easily accessible for a broad audience, okay? Technicians, professional te teachers, researchers, students, wine enthusiasts, wine lovers, wineries, auxiliary companies, public administration, etc. It's not a book for academics. It's not only a book for researchers, okay? We, we start, we, we, we go to the academic sources, okay, to take uh, all the knowledge, but we want to transfer so the, the chapters, the, the, the way to, to, to write, uh, try to be uh, relatively common, not uh, only for a specialist, okay? So. Oh, the philosophy of the book, how, 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 how we structure and order the, the contents. So it is, the book is structured as a journey, as an international wine route, okay? We are talking about wine tourism. Why not, uh, why not uh, order the contents? Why not structure the book as if it was um, a wine route, okay? With our first part, preparation for the trip, I mean, let's say, let's analyze strateg strategic and horizontal aspects of, of the wine tourism that can be, uh, can be seen, can be discovered in, in any country of, of the wine world. And as second part uh, of the stage of the journey, when, where we have um, visited and we have chosen some of the most important wine countries and trying to, to, to identify in, in these countries, wine tourism models and good and sustainable innovation practices. Okay, the spirit of our journey, we have tried, we have tried to, uh, to replicate that we consider that it is the, the soul, the soul of the wine, the wine tourism. For us, wine tourism is a very specific kind of tourism where we can uh, find three uh, different components, okay? It depends, evidently, of every wine tourist, but in general, we consider that the wine tourism has three specific characteristics. Uh, the wine tourism for us has an intellectual or cultural dimension because we consider that a lot of wine tourists want to learn, want to discover models, strategies, and initiatives. And we have to we have to, to reflect on this spirit. In a second place, we, we think that the wine tourism and the wine tourist want to enjoy, to enjoy of the wine, enjoy wineries, enjoy landscapes, enjoy the, the culture of the wine. So we, we have wanted to, to take into account this rec recreational uh, or a hedonistic uh, dimension. And thirdly, we consider also that wine tourism uh, it's or has a um, social, very important, uh, very clear social dimension uh, at, as, as, the, as the wine as well, okay? So uh, we consider that the, the, the wine tourism allows um, meeting people, um, doing knowledge of, of other, other persons, even making friends, and, and we wanted also that our book, uh, in some way, uh, has this spirit of connection, of, of meeting people together, okay? And for every country, for every stage of our wine route, we have uh, tried to, to, to develop three contents. What is the situation of the wine tourism in this country, in this region, with figures, data, evidence, okay? Then, all the information that it is available. A second point would be, um, what are the factors of development of wine tourism in this uh, country? So uh, uh, an aspect more of analysis, if you want. And a third component for every, uh, for every country, for every uh, chapter devoted to a country is, uh, let's try to discover, to identify uh, cases uh, of a history of innovative and sustainable wine tourism, okay? So with this spirit, with this philosophy, and with this structure, we have there in this uh, map, in this world map, the countries that we have uh, visited, that we have incorporated to uh, our book. 
you are going to find there um, some of the most important countries in the world of the wine as producers, as exporters, but only some of not very common countries in this uh, kind of uh, books. Um, but we have incorporated because we consider that they have uh, a wine sector that it is relatively important or can be important in the future. Uh, they are good uh, importers and, and mainly they have some good uh, experiences or cases of wine tourism. Okay, so in America, you, you find uh, United States, it's, it's clear for, for the reason for which uh, United States is there. Um, one of the countries of where the uh, new wine tourism model uh, has, has, uh, was born. Okay, Mexico, Mexico more uh, associated with an uh, importer country, but it is also an, in a producer country and in some, uh, in some regions as Baja California in the center of Mexico, in Querétaro, in Guanajuato, and they have uh, some cases of uh, successful wine tourism, okay. In, in the south, um, Chile and Argentina, it's obvious, uh, some of the most important uh, great producers and exporters of wine in the world. And uh, less known, the case of Brazil, okay? Brazil, uh, where the production, and you know maybe very well in, in Portugal, is it's important in the south of Brazil, uh, where the wine production has been developed in, in some cases of the, of the hand of the Italians immigration maybe also Portuguese immigration, European immigration, and where we have um, found some very interesting uh, cases of wine tourism that we have incorporated to our book. In the case of Europe, well, in theory, we could have incorporated uh, almost uh, one chapter of, for every European country, but we had to choose. So we have choose Portugal, Spain, French, Italy, Germany, and also Hungary. In this case, Hungary is all, not only because Gergely is, is there in, in, the, in the book as an editor, um, but because uh, Hungary is also a very important country in the world of the wine with uh, some iconic iconic wines, okay, and with a very specific uh, history of wine tourism <coughs> and evolution interesting that we have um, learned and incorporated in our book. In the case of Africa, we don't have any any country. We, we could have incorporated maybe, maybe South Africa, but it has not been very easy for us to, to incorporate some author with, um, let's say, um, trust uh, for a confidence for us. And in the case of uh, Australia and Nueva Zelanda, Nueva Zelanda is also obvious. As you know, Australia is also one of the, of the places of birth of the new concept of wine tourism. Okay, and the case of China and uh, Japan, less known, but also very interesting. Uh, we have had a lot of difficulties to find a good author in the case of China. We have had several candidates, uh, some of them Chinese, but at the end of the day, has been a Spaniard who has <laughs> written the, uh, a journalist specialized, maybe Maria Joao knows him, <clears throat> specialized in the world of wine tourism, a person with a lot of experience, a lot of uh, journeys in, in, in China with some very good contacts, very good searches, who has uh, prepared the, the chapter about China, very interesting, where we discover. I think most of us uh, discovered with a very great surprise, not only the, the, the amount of money that Chinese are, are investing in, in wine sector and in wine tourism sector, but the, 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 the model, the more, the, the, a completely clear model of wine tourism that they have. And the case of Japan, and the author is a, a Japanese, a Japanese expert in, in wine tourism, uh, is a colleague of the OEB. Okay, and maybe it is the best <coughs> person of Japan to, to explain the role of wine tourism in, in developing the, the Japan wine industry, okay. So, last to, to, to finish my, my presentation, my part of the presentation. Some ideas that I am not going to, to develop all of them, that some of them are going to be developed by Kergli but that uh, conform the, 
the, the framework, the framework that we have um, built after after reading of the chapter, uh, where we can say that a new a new model of wine tourism, a new vision arise of this journey of what we have done around the world, or at least around a very important part of the wine tourism world. And for me, there are five important topics that we could develop, Maria Joao, maybe in other, in other time, if, if we have the opportunity with more in detail, but I am going to mention. And the first idea is the, um, the value added, um, created by the wine tourism, added the strategies that could be developed it, uh, uh, after taking into account this um, value added. The second, idea is that uh, there are different models of wine tourism and there is not only one model even in in in, in every in each country every even in in every in each region you can we can find on different models and this shows that it is a kind of a value ladder okay then the, the the seller that want to start on the process of offering of delivering of wine tourism services can let's say choose or, or, or can can um, develop um, step by step okay a, a path to taking into account the, the risk and taking into account the profits okay this is a value ladder I'm going to show you a, a small picture about that uh, third idea is the elements that um, determine in some way that uh, influence the competitiveness of wine tourism because you know that uh, in some cases some wineries um, believe that if they invest uh, if they prepare the seller to 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 accept tourism and, and the business is going to to start uh, automatically okay you also you open your doors and tourists will come okay and it is not evident we have uh, had um, um, a broad a broad um, vision and we have to take into account different elements and then determine the competitiveness of the wine tourism even for a seller okay for idea would be the wine tourism is a multi-dimensional activity and uh, with a lot of uh, elements uh, connected to the wine tourism experience and uh, in every of these dimensions uh, we can innovate okay in innovation is as as, uh, as, as big, as open, as uh, multidimensional is wine tourism. I am going to show you very quickly also um, a short um, a picture, a brief picture with that. And the, the five idea would be the sustainability. What uh, we uh, understand by sustainability of wine tourism. And this my, my colleague and, and friend Gergely is going to, to explain in, in more detail. So very quickly, uh, added value for wine tourism, okay, for wineries, direct sales, ticket revenues, branding building, brand loyalty, new channels, and this, and this, if, if a winery is really convinced of that, if a winery is, has a very clear that it is a new, a new line of business that they want to develop, uh, this must be incorporated to its strategic plan. So this, this must be something professional, something with a very specific, um, let's say, a business model. For wine growing areas, it exists, it is clear, a, a clear a value added because, uh, because the, we have seen that um, wine tourism promote investments, uh, uh, create a skill employment, very interesting employment. For, and, and finally, it's a source of rural development. We very important for countries as, as Portugal, as Spain, as other, other countries in, in the world, world where uh, rural areas has uh, real problems, okay, of, uh, of democracy, and the demography and development activity. And so uh, that we have seen is that for these areas, where it exists uh, some kind of districts or, uh, or hubs of wine and uh, wine tourism, a territorial development strategy should, should be adopted by authorities, by uh, associations, because this is not only sellers, there are a lot of business related to, to wine, to wineries that are also concerned by that. 
and uh, for wine countries, that's clear. We have seen in Spain and in, in a lot of countries that uh, wine tourism is a medium high spending tourist. It's very interesting to attract um, tourists that, that, that are going to spend more than the average of, of the average tourist. Okay, and for countries, uh, 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 of, for countries as Spain, clearly, it's a very interesting because it is an off season of tourism because you know we have um, a lot of tourists concentrated in the in the um, in the months of summer different models okay um, let's very quickly very quickly we have seen in spain that maybe one fifth of of spanish sellers only one fifth offered at that moment uh, wine tourism services okay I, I mean in a professional way okay so nivel o this is in Spanish, sorry, <laughs> but nivel O, they are there, the, 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 the sellers that don't offer, don't offer wine tourist services because they, they are not sure, they are not convinced by, by different reasons. This is, this gives us one idea of the potential of creation. Nivel one would be the, the basic model, okay, visit the seller test uh, the, the wines and the, the, the seal of wines. Nivel two, we observe that there are some sellers that have developed uh, a, a great uh, portfolio of activities uh, uh, inside inside the seller, um, covering most of the services, more of the expectations that um, tourists can have. Uh, we have discovered in some countries, uh, 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 let's say level three, where the seller uh, becomes a kind of um, of tourist service firm in the sense that uh, these um, sellers offer uh, inside a lot of uh, services, wine tourist services, but even they are able to offer services, tourist services in the area uh, around. Well, competitiveness of the wine tourist offer, that's clear. There is a business factor. I mean, the, the, the strength of the wine tourist resources, prestige, brand, facility. architecture, etc. There is a second element is the territorial competitiveness. And this is the strength of the wine tourist resources of the area and its organization. We, we have seen that in some cases, in some regions, there is a problem of infrastructure, for instance, and they lack uh, good roads and they lack uh, information to direct, to, to allow um, tourists to, to get to the, to the wineries. Uh, in some cases, it lacks the organization. It lacks uh, it lacks the connections and etc. There is a third factor related to the location factor. Location factor uh, taking into account um, where is the main uh, market, inter internal market or external market. This is a very important uh, element of competitiveness. We have seen in Spain last year that, for instance. Uh, sellers or regions very close to, to the Mediterranean coast, uh, they are very affected by the, um, the COVID-19 crisis uh, and very dependent of the um, international tourists uh, has suffered a lot of uh, during the last year. But in the other side, the, 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 the sellers, the regions more and more connected to the internal market, more close to the Madrid, Barcelona or other important um, let's say internal markets has suffered less and maybe this year this summer is going to happen again the same okay because well we don't know the perspectives maybe we believe that in summer the in july august the tourists will come but then we are not very sure well you know we we share the same issue the same concern but that it seems clear that if the vaccination it continues like that unless the in, internal tourism the spanish tourists in our case mm -hmm will be the most important. So the, the seller and the, the, the regions best connected, uh, closest to these uh, internal uh, markets will be, will be better. And uh, a fourth factor is the institutional factor. Okay? We, we have seen a lot of differences by countries, by regions, uh, taking into account the, the plans, the strategies and the, the support, the public support. My last, my last, my last uh, slide is uh, a, a vision, um, a brief vision of some of the dimensions of the, of the wine tourist. It is in Spanish, I'm sorry, Gergely, 
but uh, we can uh, you can perfectly um, perfectly understand uh, wine tourists is connected to a lot of things and uh, and every day wine to, uh, tourists uh, look for more aspects not only to taste the wines to visit the preferred wineries but to experience with one landscape uh, two museums architecture gastronomy hospitality services culture um, networks and the, the experience of the origin uh, um, certification culture of wine um, management etc so in in every of these 10 and more and more elements we discover opportunities to innovate and my last will be that this is the poster that we have um, done for the seminar of March um, of the last year and that, that I mentioned you before and uh, a little um, proverb of uh, one French poet uh, he said je ne suis pas poète je suis vigneron et pourquoi <laughs> and why and why to finish with this um, quote because one thing that we have uh, seen in a lot of countries if that if that there is a kind of shift towards towards the the vineyard towards the landscape maybe maybe wine tourists they start it in in the cellar for 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 um, um let's say given uh, services to people who wanted to know the cellar or to taste the wines but that we see is the 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 wine tourists is going out uh, to the cellar and the, the rest of the elements the landscape the vines and all the reds are and getting more and more importance so the idea of let's say the origin uh, the origin as in the the case of uh, denomination d'origine and etc are gaining are gaining importance in in the wine tourism at the crisis on of COVID-19, it's going to increase even more the importance that it happens around the, around the, the winery. So thank you very much. I am very, very happy again to, to participate in this webinar. I hope you are going to discover in our book um, ideas, references, something to incorporate in your strategies. And I'm happy to participate again, uh, Maria, if you continue organizing and the university, okay, and this university are very, very kind for hosting us in, in, other, in other opportunities to discuss all this content. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Raul. It was a pleasure to hear you. It was a great, great work uh, that you and Gergely done. Uh, I have the honor to participate in that. Thank you for the invitation also, because it was very generous of you. And now we are going uh, to to speak with uh, Gergay, please. It's your word, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, warm welcome from Germany. Uh, my name is Gergay Solnoki. Um, I'm a co-author or co-editor uh, of this book together with uh, Raoul. And I hope you can see the shared uh, screen. Do you? Is it okay? Okay, excellent. So. Um, you might suppose that uh, I'm going to talk about um, the main findings of the book, um, uh, which is not true because um, uh, it was uh, in in, uh, in advance we had a conversation with with Raúl uh, and with Maria, and the question was, okay, what should I show uh, to you? What what, what should I present? Uh, and then we decided uh, that based on the results, uh, results and findings, uh, we uh, which which has been published uh, actually in the book. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, some 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 summary, uh, let's say, um, which is uh, of course uh, um, related, which is related uh, to the book. Um, and then there are actually three topics um, uh, we selected um, uh, to share with you uh, some knowledge, some findings. Uh, the the first one is sustainability. Why sustainability? Is what and what is exactly sustainable wine tourism, which is a quite a complicated uh, definition. The second one uh, is related to uh, to the economic impact, the economic importance um, of wine tourism. And then last but not least, uh, nowadays, unfortunately, uh, we can't avoid uh, the C word. Uh, and the C word means, uh, of course, COVID. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit uh, later on at the end of my presentation 
about uh, how the COVID um, uh, pandemic uh, uh, influenced uh, the, um, the wine tourism uh, industry and then what are the, uh, the outlooks uh, um, so uh, post COVID uh, for the post COVID uh, time. Anything else uh, uh, you can read in the book. And uh, we are in a very um, fortunate situation uh, because we don't have to sell our book. Uh, we don't have to do promotion and things like this uh, because the book is for free. So actually you can just uh, anytime download the, uh, the book. Uh, it's not always like this. So, <laughs> so let's start with the first uh, part, um, sustainable wine tourism. So uh, you, you, you can just you, you just wonder uh, why we uh, decided uh, to, to put sustainable innovative, innovative wine tourism um, as a title of this book. Uh, so look, I know that lots of you are fed off with this uh, term sustainability because you hear it uh, everywhere and every time and everyone's talking about sustainability, but believe me, this is the future. And it really doesn't matter whether we are talking about um, wine uh, industry or talking about uh, uh, auto industry um, or, or talking about whatever, yeah, sustainability is important. And we can't say that uh, it won't play a, a role. It will be the, one of the most important role uh, in the future. So that's the reason we decided for sustainability. And then um, the, the first question which uh, um, uh, might come to your mind uh, when you hear this, this uh, term sustainable wine tourism, what is it actually? So uh, before I show you, I, I promise you, I I'm, I'm won't uh, uh, give you um, a theoretical uh, lecture, um, uh, what I normally do it at the university, but this time I won't. This is the only uh, slide uh, with uh, a definition, uh, but then I finished uh, with definitions. But please allow me uh, to, to go for, for this multifaceted uh, term. Um, yeah. First, um, I took the definition by uh, Poetry and Gets, um, which was published in 2006, uh, six, uh, and it was described as uh, the sustainable wine tourism. Uh, it really depends on from which perspective you want to define it. Do you want to define it from the, from the resources uh, perspective, or uh, are you talking about the forms of uh, wine tourism uh, development, or are you focusing on, on impact uh, caused by this uh, sustainable wine tourism? Yeah, And then when you compare um, this um, um, definition with another definition um, published by Sigala, uh, who uh, was or is actually um, uh, one of the uh, authors of our book, uh, Mariana Sigala uh, from Australia. And then she um, defined uh, sustainable wine tourism on another level. And she said, okay, this is uh, first of all, a multidisciplinary concept. She used the very traditional uh, three pillar concept of uh, environmental, uh, economic and social uh, dimensions of sustainability and said, okay, to all of these, uh, we have also all of the actors uh, of sustainability, starting with producers, uh, ending up with associations and so on. So what you can see here, then it is really a very complex, complicated um, uh, definition. And when we try to, to, to summarize it, uh, then um, uh, we can say that uh, um, there are different aspects. Uh, this is the only, all these two definitions we could uh, already see um, that um, there is an environment protection as, uh, um, aspect, um, less emotion, uh, um, emissions, um, uh, circular process, uh, resource saving, like less water, less uh, um, electricity. Then we have more a political um, uh, dimension and issues like uh, rural development um, or, or responsible uh, consumption. And then of course, on the left-hand side, uh, we have lots of um, uh, economic issues like uh, fair and long-term economics, uh, security, partnership, working together and so on. And when you concentrate on this, one thing uh, will be clear and the, the thing what will be clear that that these are very strongly related um, to the, to the uh, sustainable development goals, the 70 goals uh, defined uh, and published uh, by the United Nations. Uh, these are also related to the wine tourism. And then when we put together uh, also the different uh, um, pillars, economic, ecological, uh, social, cultural, politics, and all of the uh, actors of uh, wine tourism, then we have a complex picture 
And this picture is so complex that it's not... I wanted to show you the complexity of um, sustainable wine tourism. And um, when, you, um, when you read the book, then you will see that, uh, that all of these um, um, this, um, aspects um, appear here and there, uh, but of course, in not, not in one chapter, but in different chapters. So we uh, uh, um, have, uh, let's say, um, an overview of all of these um, uh, aspects, uh, but uh, uh, shared in different uh, uh, things. We uh, started with uh, with Raoul uh, some years ago, and uh, we have the main results, actually the final results, uh, already in, in our hand. Um, this is the publication, uh, the book. Um, but uh, we um, didn't stop. Um, and we said, okay, uh, when we already started, then let's continue uh, this journey uh, together. And that's the reason uh, we um, working together with uh, with a um, scientific journal, it's called uh, Sustainability. Um, we created um, a special issue, which is called Sustainable Wine and Beverage in Tourism. What else, <laughs> of course? Um, and um, this is Raul uh, and me and uh, two other um, guys, uh, one from New Zealand, another one from Germany. Uh, we created this one. And uh, because this is um, an open access um, journal, then you are also able to download uh, all the publications uh, we will get here uh, from different authors. So that was, it was the first part. Let's concentrate on the economic impact. And I, I, I'm pretty sure that I don't tell you um, huge secrets uh, uh, when I, um, when I uh, say that, uh, that actually the main aim of wine tourism is, uh, uh, is to earn money. Yeah, because it's not that uh, that uh, that um, wine uh, tourism experts or actually the producers uh, are so happy to uh, to to sacrifice their weekends and uh, show their wines uh, from earning nothing uh, at all. Of course, there is a hardcore economic background for this. Yeah, to earn money and of course uh, to uh, to publish the wines and uh, to show uh, the the shuttle or whatever they have uh, behind this, but to earn money. And um, just uh, to show you, this is not wine tourism. This is general tourism, yeah? Just to show you uh, some results uh, or some hard facts um, before the COVID pandemic. Uh, on the left-hand side, you, you can see the world tourism um, uh, data like $8.8 trillion. It's a big business. And again, I'm talking about tourism. Wine tourism, of course, is a little bit smaller. 10% uh, of global uh, employment um, and... Um, uh, at that time, we had a growth uh, rate of almost 4%. Yeah? Compared to uh, with Germany, uh, also in Germany, um, tourism uh, plays an important role. And I would say also in other countries like uh, Portugal, like uh, Spain, and like uh, other European countries, it's very important. But among these, Germany um, has the most important role uh, in terms of uh, uh, revenue uh, of tourism. Uh, 200, almost uh, 300 billion uh, euros and also lots of job uh, here. So there were lots of, and this is also um, uh, deducted uh, from different uh, scientific papers. Uh, there are lots of, um, um, or some of the publications um, um, and they both focused um, on, on the economic impact um, and try to find out, okay, uh, um, but what is the what is the amount of money uh, we can create or one country can create uh, with uh, wine tourism? And you can see here there are different methods. Uh, there are completely different ways um, uh, to do this. Uh, so this is what we repeated um, actually in Germany, and this is uh, where you will find um, a chapter uh, in the book um, we published. Um, this is the chapter from Germany, and this is where we described. Um, the economic important uh, or impact uh, of wine tourism in Germany. And um, let's take this picture, um, why this is again quite complicated, but uh, maybe let's uh, focus first uh, on these three different uh, segments, three groups. This is primary wine tourists, secondary wine tourists, and non-wine tourists, yeah? Because we actually uh, took all tourists in a wine region and we analyzed how many of them are primary wine tourists. So tourists, they, uh, they said, okay, I'm traveling to this region because I like wine and I want to try, try some wines there. Visited wineries, 
these are the primary wine tourists. Secondary wine tourists are tourists in a wine region uh, um, where uh, their, um, let's say, motivation, uh, wine doesn't play or didn't play an important role, but still they visited uh, at least one winery, maybe by chance or whatever. These are secondary wine tourists and non-wine tourists. And uh, just um, bear in your mind that the, the group and the share of non-wine tourists is approximately 80%, so 8-0. So it's a huge, so uh, it means only 10% primary wine tourists, 10% secondary wine tourists. And this is the chance, it is not only in Germany, but only in other um, uh, wine producing countries. This is the chance to convince and to reach non-wine um, uh, tourists, um, uh, they are in the wine region, but they don't visit wineries, and to 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 uh, to reach them somehow and to convince them somehow to visit uh, different wineries. So what you can see here is the daily travel expenses, what different um, groups uh, um, in average uh, pay um, or or uh, yeah expense and uh, pay for uh, for one day. And what you can see here, we have here a deluxe um, or a prime uh, um, or a premium um, segment. And these are primary wine tourists. They pay much more money or they, they uh, spend much more money per day in the region than the other tourists. Uh, it is not because they, they, they buy lots of wine. Of course, they spend also more, more uh, money uh, on wine. But uh, look at here, for example, they are, um, uh, they are willing to spend more uh, money also on gastronomy. And as you know, uh, wine tourism is a part of gastronomy tourism. Yeah? And then um, this is an interesting uh, combination. They really like, they come to the region, they want to drink wine, they combine it with, uh, with gastronomic um, experiences uh, and they enjoy uh, uh, the, the landscape. So it's a perfect combination. And when uh, you managed um, to, to uh, get people from the secondary wine tourists to make them to primary wine tourists, or even to get people from the non-wine tourists to make them to secondary wine tourists, this is, again, huge business, and you can uh, just increase uh, um, uh, the wine tourism um, um, uh, income. So what we've done, uh, we conducted uh, in total, uh, 4,500 uh, face-to-face interviews um, in Germany in 2017, 2018, in all of the German wine regions. And what we've done is actually, we calculated, of course, this is, this is everything what I'm showing you is, uh, is on the theoretical level. So th these are uh, models and calculations and evaluations. Yeah? Um, and then we calculated for each of the 13 different wine growing regions in Germany, uh, how much tourists um, uh, uh, are they, how many visitors they, it's called in, in, in tourism a visitor day, days, and uh, what is the tourist spending there in the region. And then don't make the mistake, it's, it's, it, it is not wine tourism. It is tourism generally in wine growing regions, including also wine tourism, of course. That's the reason we have um, a 26 billion euros uh, annually, or used to have actually before the uh, before a, um, a COVID pandemic. And then out of these approximately 5 billion euro um, uh, is related to wine tourism. So huge amount of money. And then, of course, and this is my last part, life has changed. And not only life has changed, but um, uh, because of COVID, uh, generally, um, the, the tourism um, has changed. And then when you um, look at this, um, uh, this figure, and this is for, from uh, uh, UNWTO, uh, this is kind of a prediction uh, or um, um, uh, forecast uh, for the future. Um, and then they said, OK, because of vaccination, because of these and that's, um, uh, the, the tourism industry uh, will um, start uh, increasing uh, somewhere in January. It was not the case. As you already know, there was an extension until uh, May and in some countries even longer, yeah? And then there will be hopefully a uh, development. But what I wanted to show you um, 
the um, UNWTO uh, prognosis um, uh, that uh, the tourism sooner or later, maybe in one or two or three years, will reach the same level of, um, of international tourists um, like uh, we used to have um, uh, in the past. And I really do hope so that it will be the case. Uh, uh, nevertheless, um, uh, we have to say that a lot of things uh, um, has changed. And then, and this is my last slide, um, I try to um, uh, put together some, some trends for, for a post-COVID time. So actually, um, at these trends, uh, we, we, uh, uh, we have been seen uh, uh, since uh, COVID uh, pandemic started, but uh, we suppose uh, that it will be a kind of long-term trend um, also uh, after, uh, or in the post-COVID time. So individual tourism, yeah? individual wine tourism, what does it mean? Um, because of the restrictions, because of the lockdowns, um, Still, um, uh, last year, lots of uh, hotels uh, remained closed and things like this. And then uh, there was a, a creativity of people that they uh, invested, um, especially in, in, in Germany or in other um, in northern European countries, invested in, in, in camps, so these vans, uh, and then spent their holiday. Um, and uh, Maria, you mentioned that uh, you're going to visit uh, Mosel. So let's have a look at the Mosel because they, they, they did a perfect job actually in the last um, 10, 20 years. Uh, they specialized on tourists, on Dutch and uh, Danish uh, tourists. They, uh, they arriving uh, with these camp, camps and, uh, and vans uh, and they spent days um, um, not only in camp, uh, camp places, uh, but directly at wineries they uh, build a space for, for, for bigger uh, cars, like, like uh, camp uh, cars and so on. And then they are specialized on this. And it is a perfect uh, um, uh, thing, like uh, when you drink directly at the winery a glass of wine or two glasses of wine, or maybe one bottle of wine, yeah? And then you don't have to uh, take your car and drive to the, um, to the hotel or something like this, but you can spend the night directly at the hotel. And this is a big business again uh, at the Mosel uh, River. And another one is more healthy. Uh, this is actually bicycling uh, and taking the bicycle, which also became uh, very sexy. Let's say in the last years, um, uh, um, and it's uh, actually uh, during the COVID, uh, take your bicycle, go to the next uh, winery, uh, and then take some wines, uh, eat something, and uh, coming back. Okay. And the last uh, picture uh, shows you this an individual way of uh, tourism that um, uh, it's um, it's uh, it's a kind of trend, or we we suppose. Uh, that in the future, uh, people won't spend or, or won't have three or four time holidays, um, uh, but maybe one or two times, um, uh, uh, especially uh, German tourists, because they are really uh, champions uh, of uh, having holiday uh, many times a year. And then doing a reduced number of holidays, um, but concentrating uh, not only lying on the beach two weeks long, but also visiting some, some individual things. And this is where in the future, hopefully, wine tourism uh, can uh, uh, earn some uh, some points and uh, some extra tourists. So the other uh, trend is uh, locality, um, discovering uh, your own region or region in your own country. And this is also a trend uh, we have experienced uh, last year. Um, lots of people stayed uh, actually also in, in, in Germany and um, uh, try to um, uh, discover some German regions. And also this is where uh, wine regions uh, became so popular. Uh, they used to be popular, but they became, became even more popular uh, last summer. Um, the other one is the, the nature, of course, and this is culture, um, um, uh, culture and nature. Uh, they are very strong uh, related with each other and uh, because wineries, because wine is an agriculture product, is a nature product, uh, then it's a perfect combination. And as I already mentioned, uh, gastronomy. Gastronomy is very important for wine tasting. Yeah? When as, as, as soon as you can, as you are able to offer something to eat, when the people try some wines, uh, you, you, can, you can attract much more people uh, there. Because some people, they are, they are all interested in, in, in gastronomy and eating, 
But when a US winery offers something like this, then you can also attract a completely other segment. Uh, they might not be so interested in wine. Digitalization. Uh, you might remember at the very beginning, I told you that uh, I'm pretty sure that you fed up already with the, with the term um, uh, sustainability. The same for digitalization. This is this, uh, when you play a bullshit bingo, this is, you know, what is it? Uh, these are these two terms, uh, they are uh, uh, popped up and uh, you won uh, because everyone will uh, use uh, or uh, use these words, uh, sustainability and digitalization. So, but what is digitalization and what kind of um, uh, role um, does it play in, in, in wine tourism? Uh, we conducted in February and March um, an, a worldwide survey um, on uh, online wine tastings. And it's, it's, it's in, in, in incredibly increased. Um, actually, uh, it was invented, let's say, uh, 20 years ago, but no one used it uh, until 2020. And then lots of people started uh, using this, um, uh, of course, with a good reason uh, that there was no uh, chance to, um, to um, uh, welcome people and uh, attract people uh, at your winery. So, and we suppose um, that, uh, that uh, it will remain, maybe not in the same amount uh, of um, online wine tastings uh, what we have had uh, last year and this year, but it will remain uh, because it's, uh, it's also kind of sustainable um, uh, tourism. The other one is, uh, is the future has already arrived uh, in form of um, uh, virtual reality. And you might think that, uh, that, okay, it will be next year or in the next 10 years. No, ladies and gentlemen, in Germany, the German Wine Institute already started a tour uh, visiting bigger um, cities like Munich, uh, Berlin, uh, Hamburg, uh, Hanover, and so on, with a track. And in this track, they have wines. And to these wines, uh, they uh, can show with virtual reality the region, the producers, and so on. So and the, the motto is, uh, when you are not able to go to your, uh, or to uh, visit uh, wineries, then the winery will really uh, visit your uh, city and we show you uh, things, yeah. Another one, of course, um, is um, reducing um, uh, CO2 uh, and then staying at home, which is actually a good point um, uh, for, again, for sustainability. Don't use your car, uh, order the wine package, uh, stay uh, at your uh, laptop and computer and do an online wine tasting. Of course, it has nothing to do with, uh, with wine romantic, uh, it's another story, but still you can, st you can still um, um, have a kind of uh, nice experience. And the last thing is uh, safety um, and uh, healthiness um, as a trend for the future. The very first picture should represent here organic uh, wineries. I really uh, believe that um, in the future, uh, people uh, will have a kind of um, preference um, visiting organic wineries um, um, uh, compared to, um, to uh, conventional uh, wineries. And of course, the, the, the middle uh, picture uh, shows you, um, this is what we uh, learned last year, uh, the hygiene um, uh, concept uh, of the wineries, which is important. And the last one, uh, you might be uh, wondering what, 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 what this one is. Uh, this is an autonome car. So autonome car means that you sit in and it drives you uh, wherever you uh, want to go. Yeah. And imagine this dimension. And this is also something what uh, one of our uh, author um, mentioned in, the, in his um, chapter in our book. Uh, and this is um, uh, a guy uh, who used to be uh, the head of uh, uh, wine in moderation. Um, and then he uh, also wrote a chapter. And his vision is actually that uh, this is the revolutional um, solution for wine tourism. Uh, just imagine uh, you don't have to care uh, on how much wine you drink when you have a car like this. Because uh, in Germany, 80% of all wine visitors, winery visitors, they come by car, yeah? And then in this case, they could come by car uh, and then drink uh, different wines and buy lots of wines uh, and eat something and drink again wine and then sit again, um, uh, get again into the car and uh, the car drives them home. So 
future uh, visions, uh, but uh, the reality is already here or already there. Uh, just think of uh, Google cars and uh, Tesla cars and then things like this. So just want to summarize uh, all of the things um, uh, I uh, mentioned to you, I described to you. Sustainability is a big thing for the future. Don't miss it. Yeah. The second point is wine tourism we do believe and we really do believe uh, that it will one or two or three years um, play the the same important role if not more important than it used to play before yeah and then the last one there are different trends uh, also don't miss these trends uh, because uh, it will change uh, uh, not generally the tourism but also including necessarily and automatically also the wine tourism so Thank you very much. Also in uh, in name of my uh, co-author of the book, uh, Raoul, and uh, we are happy to answer uh, your questions, uh, uh, hear your comments uh, if you have some. Thank you very much. Uh, I think, uh, thank you uh, for sharing the contents of the book. It's very important for us uh, to know that element, uh, to know better the wine tourism sector and also to, to do better. You know, I think with the Terra experience, uh, we all uh, have uh, learned with that. Uh, I don't know if uh, anybody wants to do some questions. Não sei se alguém quererá fazer alguma pergunta aos nossos coordenadores do livro. Existe alguma dúvida? Aproveitem. Pode ser em português, se quiserem, depois nós. Sim, se alguém quiser em português, também podemos traduzir. Em espanhol também, esta permitida. Em espanhol. Bem, bem. Também se levava bem, não? Um pouquinho melhor. Portuguese people is a bit shy, but uh, what I can tell you, uh, Gergay and Raul, is that um, we are trying in Portugal with the APENO, the, the Wine Tourism Associ Portuguese Association, is to do better, it's to grow with our, our wine tourism. And we are uh, going to, you know, to, to invest in formation in services. What you said in our in your presentation and how too, and it's very important. It's very interesting when we we see in the book all the people talk about it. And the services is also uh, what you uh, what you talk about sustainability and uh, digitalization because people have to offer lots of services. Uh, uh, in, uh, with the future, you know, seeing the future. And so this is very important for us uh, to, to read that kind of books, even because what is interesting, more interesting in this book is that we can see the perspective of all the people around the world, of the, the specialists around the world. And so this is very important to uh, have a good vision of the wine tourism sector, okay? So we, we, it was really a pleasure to, to take part of it. Uh, I learned a lot because, I, I, of course, I travel a lot, but uh, I, I don't go uh, uh, with all this pandemic. Everything stopped, but I want to return. And uh, when we travel, we also learn a lot. So when we read the book, we can uh, see the, the resume of each country. And this is very important. So. I, I say to the people uh, who is listening us, and also uh, we are taping this session, so we are going to put uh, in our YouTube channel, so people can see. And uh, please, uh, we 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 send to our associated uh, uh, producers and and people who are uh, in our association. We send the the link of Kashamar to download. Okay. Uh, so people who don't know uh, how to do it, uh, please write to me or, or send an email uh, to, so, so we can send you the link also, okay? It's, it's really important to read that kind of books, okay? So this is the last chance. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to take <clears throat> Maria, the opportunity. Can I, add, can I add one? Nobody. Thank you very much once again. Uh, you too. It was a pleasure. Maria, Professor Raul wants to talk. Ah, sorry, Raul. Sorry. Maria, before 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 giving us a goodbye, 
I would like to, I, I mentioned before, the social dimension of wine, the social dimension of wine tourism in particular. Uh, for me, this book has been also a good experience to meet new people. And you, Maria Joa, has been <laughs> a fantastic, you are enthusiastic, uh, you are the author. Maria is the author of the Portuguese uh, chapter, okay? Maria has reacted very well from the beginning, uh, from the beginning, and I have shared with Maria the, the process of evolution of Maria, and now Maria is the president, as maybe you know, of this Portuguese Association of Wine Tourism. And I, I want to thank you, Maria, for your enthusiasm, for your kind character, for, <clears throat> for you, for your, your um, how do you say in English? Because you like to do a lot of things with, with, uh, with us. And I hope to continue. I, 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 I am sure this is the beginning of a yes, <laughs> friendship. Yes, it's true. <laughs> Count on me, count on me, Raul. So it we, was are very, really a... we are neighbors, we are brothers. Yes. We're going to do something together. I am going to visit you as soon as possible. As we yes, you are together. very welcome. We are going to share a person in person meeting with a part of um, knowledge and transfer and so on, but the other part is the personal exchange and, and the idea of um, doing something together. Okay, so I open this collaboration of all of you, okay? Colleagues, uh, professors, teachers, professionals. Let's try to do something together. The original idea was how to promote <laughs> wine tourism in Spain, but finally is how to promote wine tourism in, in every country, in every region, in uh, every place where there are wine lovers and, and people that enjoy of this good experience, okay? So thank you very much and I hope to see you in person very soon. Thank you. Thank you very much for you too. And uh, Erlindo, I don't know if you want to close the session. I think I, I see some uh, uh, one hand. I think it's Francesca. Uh, really? Uh, uh, yes, hi. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. Ah, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Francesca. Sorry. No, okay. Hi. Um, I'm in Porto. And well, I got this link through my professional advisor because I'm writing my master thesis in, um, well, it's based about uh, the construction, the strategy for implementing the wine club in Fita Preta, Alentejo. Yeah. And uh, well, my master is the winter master. It's the, I don't know if you've heard of it before. It's the international master in wine tourism innovation based between uh, Tarragona, Porto and, and Bordeaux. And well, if I could ask you anything, I just wanted to know <coughs> your, um, your view, your opinion about using wine clubs uh, in Portugal like have you heard of any before because I mean it's the ones I've seen I've benchmarked pretty basic or maybe you have any good example that I could add to my to my list my research <laughs> so I don't know any wine clubs in, in Portugal uh, yeah. I just can only uh, answer the, the your question from 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 German perspective um, mm -hmm. we we conducted some some years ago um, a survey um, and it was actually wine clubs and so on, uh, and uh, some of the some of the wineries uh, um, started this. And what we realize actually in in Germany is that very well known wineries with a high reputation managed to to maintain uh, mm -hmm. wine clubs, and all of the others, uh, the small wineries, the middle sized wineries, whatever, um, they they had to stop it. And um, this is more or less. Um, the, uh, uh, it looks like that in Europe it doesn't work so uh, perfectly what we what we can see here um, in the in the new world countries, for example, uh, California or uh, or Australia. They 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 make really a very good job um, in terms of uh, of wine clubs, uh, but for whatever reason um, in 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 Europe it's 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 somehow maybe they're. Uh, the, the the traditional way of uh, of thinking of wine and uh, generally mm -hmm. the, the wine tradition uh, it was not part of the wine tradition yeah or didn't, didn't used to be the part of the wine tradition uh, here in Europe uh, and um, maybe that that's that's the reason I don't know but uh, those who um, who uh, running a wine club uh, here in Germany uh, and they managed to maintain it longer term. Um, they are very satisfied with this, and uh, they had a huge advantage uh, during um, uh, COVID time. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. and they have a fixed uh, income. Yeah. Compared to to yeah to the other mm -hmm. wineries. Would it be possible to consult that survey you mentioned about the? It's written in German. Oh, okay. No, I don't know German. <laughs> it's fine. <now. laughs> but I would like you. to add, Francesca. I, I I would like to add some information about that. I, I think uh, the the Gergely thesis is, is correct in my knowledge. In the case of Spain, it's very similar. I don't see these uh, wine clubs as a tool important for wineries. But in the chapter of the United States. I advise you to read all the, okay. all the book, but in particular, if I remember well, the chapter or this tool of uh, wine, uh, the wine club is more developed, more analysis in the case of United States. Okay. okay. This is the chapter 25. It's okay. written by, by one of the great specialists in the in the world of wine. Is Liz Touch. Okay. It's a wine, mm -hmm. master of wine. Okay. Very, very good person. Very reputed. And in, in the chapter that uh, C. Wright is explaining wine tourism in the United States, very focused in, in California, mm -hmm. a very important part of the content is devoted to that, to the, how the wine clubs has had an important role in the case of California. Mm -hmm. In my knowledge now, it's the only chapter <laughs> of the 25 of this specific uh, strategy, okay, uh, has an important role. Um, okay, I have thank read you very much. On the, on the book, but I hope you are going to find there some references, okay? Wonderful, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you for your time. Okay, now I think it's done. Yeah, you think yes? it's done. So uh, we could, we could uh, have some drinks now. Yeah. <laughs> to finish. Be the social, social part, I'm uh, coming soon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah, takes uh, some days uh, till I'm there, but I'm, uh, yeah. <laughs> Where we Tomorrow is Friday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much to all. Obrigada a todos por terem participado. Desculpem, uh, no início houve um problema qualquer no link, não sei o que se passou. Mm -hmm. We had some problem with the link in the first uh, minute. But then we have uh, all this uh, fantastic audience. So thank you very much to all. Uh, obrigada a todos. Uh, espero ver-vos num próximo webinar. Um, and so uh, please, uh, Erlindo, uh, I give you the word, the last word. <laughs> well, I don't take much words. Uh, uh, obrigado a todos. Thank you very much. This is very interesting, interesting for me because uh, I began as a sommelier. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I, I did a, a different a different path. Uh, Maria João still remembers me as a sommelier and fine dining restaurants and so on. And then I, I, I took the opposite way and now I, I, I become a, a teacher in the wine tourism investigator. So I have some stuff uh, regarding this uh, issue. So for me, it's uh, it's uh, almost uh, such a joy as having a glass of good wine, listening to you guys. So thank you very much for sharing. Uh, it was a real pleasure, and who knows in the future we can do something together. So um, I know I know it's a free book, but uh, still, uh, good luck with your uh, with your fine work. I will uh, read the book, and uh, we'll try to learn something. And uh, thank you very much for sharing. Uh, it's very important these uh, sharing moments for all of us. Okay. I, I am going to 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 write. Excuse me, Arlinda. I'm going to write uh, the um, the web Link. address for uh, getting the, the book. Okay, because yes. Sonia once podemos acceder al libro. I'm going to write there, the web. Yes. Okay, please. And if, it is if... it is in Spanish and in English. It is free in, in the two cases. Okay, and it is possible to get a physical a physical book only. Maria, you are going to receive, okay, at least two two books, and maybe for some of you could be, but you need to to write to Cajamar, okay, because this is not for for sale, as uh, Gergely mentioned. It for it is part of the Cajamar, let's say, social um, activity, okay, to spread knowledge and to get to to the clients and other persons. I'm going to write there, the, the address in the chat in the chat. And one have any difficulties please write to Apeno uh, to us uh, association on tourism and we, we we help with that okay uh, I think uh, last uh, last week someone tried to get the Spanish version and couldn't just the English version I don't know what happened 
but uh, if you have any difficulties now we can get the two versions okay so uh don't worry we are here to help okay i think uh, the way is uh, the english version you can download it directly and for the yes. Spanish version, uh, you have to do the registration. That's you will true. receive an email or something like this, and then this is how it works. Uh, yes, yes, but uh, the uh, um, uh, people, uh, the, the person told me that uh, she couldn't receive the the uh, the link. Uh, I don't know what they said. Oh, we are going to send you something <laughs> an email, and she didn't receive but it's okay because she knows english it's just to have the two versions <laughs> <laughs> people portuguese is like this you know you <laughs> have something free they are going there <laughs> they okay, want that's everything the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm joking no but really for people sometimes for portuguese people it's better to read in in um, in spanish of course but uh, lots of people also uh, know english so it's okay Okay. You have then the link in, in English. Okay. It's already put in the chat. If I want also to put, if you want the link in Spanish, just with your basic data is not for, for anything more. Just to know how many people download the Spanish book. This is the only, the only goal. Okay. So it, it's free. So I am going to, to put also the Spanish link. So they okay. won't sell your addresses and uh, emails. Uh, don't worry uh, if you do the registration. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is not the aim. Why do we have to do the presentation? But maybe um, uh, Raul, you share also the link uh, for the for the Spanish. Uh, yes, I'm going to question. do it. It is. It's already already yeah. done. I I think uh, Cajamar has uh, some relation with some Portuguese rural bank. I don't know exactly, but I am sure that you have also like uh, Caja Rural or Rural. Yes, we have. Something the, similar. The, they are agreement. And maybe through the agreement with this Portugal bank, if you are clients or something like that, maybe you could uh, get uh, some physical book if you are really interested. The book, honestly, is very, is very well done with very good pictures. <laughs> the vision has been very, very well done. It, I am really happy. To, to give to give you this information because this is worthwhile to to have it if you can get it. sometimes the pictures are so good it's very difficult to choose isn't it in your case of portuguese you sent me a lot of very nice i <laughs> 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 had the difficulty to choose only <laughs> yeah it was professional pictures but we never have space to do it that's because the uh, digit uh, the g the, 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 the digital way is better you know we can put a lot of things yeah okay thank you once more and uh, hope to see you very soon okay i'm sorry obrigado Buenas okay tardes. Bye, bye guys thank you very thank much you. thank it was you a great thank pleasure you. Thank you. goodbye thank you obrigado. Hasta bye. Pronto, Maria. Hasta thanks pronto. Oh, thank Amigos. you